Hello, welcome to the Western Association of College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday late afternoon slash evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And if your question is for a specific representative, just make sure to mention their school in your question so they know it's for them. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for additional ones at the same place you signed up for this one. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash WACAC, W-A-C-A-C, -A -C, in case you need me to spell that out for you. We're in session A1. That's on the upper left part of the screen I am sharing. Those are the six institutions who will be presenting this evening and in the order that they'll present. So I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way. I will now step out of the way and turn it over to our first presentation, the representative from Sarah Lawrence College. Thank you so much, Russ. All right, let me share my screen here for you. All right, get into presentation mode. All right, everyone. So welcome to virtually visiting with Sarah Lawrence College. My name is Emily Ayler. I am an admission counselor with Sarah Lawrence covering the territories of Southern California. Nevada and New Jersey. Ideally, obviously I'd love to be with you all in person, but virtually is the next best thing as we're here tonight. So happy to have you with us today. So first I wanna start us off with just some quick facts about Sarah Lawrence, who we are and what we do. So Sarah Lawrence is a small private liberal arts and sciences college located in Bronxville, New York. If you're asking yourself the question, where is Bronxville? We will get to that in one second. We have about 1,400 undergraduate students and approximately 300 graduate students. So we do have about 1,700 total, total students at our school. Um, if there's one thing that you take away in terms of academics at Sarah Lawrence, this is what I'd love for you to take away tonight. So students are designing their own program of studies at SLC, as we call it. Um, so students are truly following their own passions and their own academic interests at Sarah Lawrence to create their journey essentially through their four years. At Sarah Lawrence, we offer over 500 courses across 50 different disciplines. So students are really able to engage with a variety of different interests that you may have known you're interested in um, in high school, but you may not have discovered yet. So that's really what we strive to do at Sarah Lawrence with an education from our private liberal arts and sciences school. So first let's talk about where is Bronxville? So Bronxville, we have a handy little map on the left-hand side of the screen. You can see the red dot in the upper right-hand corner, that's Bronxville. We're about 30 minutes away from New York City by train. And there's a couple of different ways to get into the city if you're interested in exploring that area. So first is we're lucky to be home to a Metro North station. Metro North is our main train line into Manhattan. So it's about a 10 minute walk, luckily all downhill from our campus. So you can just hop on a train and get into the city in about 30 minutes. We also have a Met van, which goes to and from our campus to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So it's another great way to engage with the city. So students really have our residential campus, which houses typically about 90% of our students. Yonkers, which you can see to the left-hand side of Bronxville, we call that a medium-sized city, and Manhattan. So you have a variety of different ways of engaging as a Sarah Lawrence student. And now if my slide would change. <laughs> So now kind of talking about our campus, obviously we'd love to have you all be there with us today, but the next best thing is showing you pictures of what our campus looks like, especially in different seasons. So first, the picture on the left top side of the screen, that is the Barbara Walters Campus Center. So we're, we are really fortunate to open um, our new student center, which is celebrating its first birthday this fall. It's a great space for students to engage, study, take classes, grab a bite to eat, um, it's a really central part of our campus, um, and I'd say a great hub for students to gather um, and just chat with one another, especially when, you know, you know that in-person uh, interactions are so important in this day and age. To the right-hand side of the screen, you can see what our campus looks like in the winter. We have been having a pretty snowy winter in New York, so that's typically what our campus would look like. I like to give a fun fact about this building. This is Westland, actually the original home of William and Sarah Warren. The bottom left side of the screen, you can see our new Remy Theater, a marble theater, which is home to amazing outdoor classes. We did, even in the pandemic, have our students present their final acting classes in this theater, which I think is an amazing way to engage in person. 
And finally, on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you can see our tea house, which we like to very fondly call Hagrid's Hut. So this is kind of introducing you to our campus. So now talking about essentially what students are doing um, in terms of the liberal arts, students are designing their own program of studies through Sarah Lawrence. So like I said earlier, you're really choosing classes that you are passionate about. So students have the opportunity to engage with a variety of different types of courses, not just ones that are, are in their intended uh, area of interest. So say you are particularly interested in psychology, but you have an inkling, a little interest in chemistry. You can take those courses because we don't like to think of it as checking off a list of boxes, but rather students are creating their own program of studies that represents their interests. We know that every student at Sarah Lawrence is an individual. We like to joke that there are just as many majors at Sarah Lawrence as there are alums. So you can imagine that's quite many. Um, we really like students to engage kind of in a close proximity with their peers and their professors. As you can see in the bottom right hand side of the screen, this is what we call seminar conference model. A seminar is a small round table discussion where students are able to interact with their peers and their professor on a close level. About 90% of our courses at Sarah Lawrence are seminar style, which means you'll really have that close interaction with your peers and your professor. So another thing that we like to emphasize at Sarah Lawrence is the idea of connecting and creating. I'd say if there's one word to describe our students at Sarah Lawrence, it's creative. Students are thinking outside of the box, how to connect with one another, with their classmates and their community around them. So these pictures really do sum up how our students are connecting with one another, with their alums, with our communities. The right hand side of the screen shows students working on research, whether that's in Yonkers, our larger community, or at Sarah Lawrence, working with professors one-on-one. -on -one. That's a large part of who we are at Sarah Lawrence and really tailoring your academic experience to who you are as a student. So now kind of focusing on community, I always like to talk about student life and what that's like at Sarah Lawrence. We have over a hundred clubs and organizations. So for a school of our size, there are so many ways to get involved. We have a variety of study abroad programs, internships, and career services. Our students love to talk about career services. I think that's something we start to think about now, especially in the world of the pandemic. What am I gonna be doing after college? So students have the opportunity to get that hands-on experience at Sarah Lawrence and really kind of dive into a career path that they may be interested in. So through internships, through hands-on experiences, different clubs and organizations, the world is kind of your oyster here. So now talking briefly about applying an aid at Sarah Lawrence. We have four different rounds, ED1, ED2, early action and regular decision. There's no application fee to apply to Sarah Lawrence. We are truly test optional. There are a variety of supplemental materials as well. So if you're interested in interviewing, submitting writing portfolios or creative arts portfolio, we'd love to have you submit that. It kind of adds out and kind of completes the idea of holistic application at Sarah Lawrence. And if you're interested in applying for financial aid, the average aid is about 38,000 at Sarah Lawrence. So I wanna thank you for visiting with me today. So please feel free to send any questions to the q and I will be here. Um, and thank you, Russ, for having me present tonight. And thank you very much for presenting. And for all of our attendees, if you have questions, use the Q&A um, button as mentioned by Emily. And you can ask questions of any of our presenters. If it is for a specific school, just make sure to name the school in your question so they know it's for them. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Hofstra University. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. My name is Jane LaRocco, and I work at Hofstra University. I work with students from sunny Southern California, as well as students from the entire state of Nevada. I share California with a colleague whose first name is Christy, who works with students from Northern California. And it's definitely my pleasure to be here with you tonight, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what Hofstra University is all about. Um, we are a medium-sized comprehensive university. We have approximately 12,000 uh, total students who study with us. About 6,500 are undergraduate students. We also offer graduate level study, so masters and PhD programs. We're also fortunate enough to have our very own law school as well as our own medical school right on the same campus. Um, even though we are a medium-sized university, our class size is super small. 
So as you can see, average class size is about 21. Um, for many of you, that may be even smaller than your high school sized classes. Um, so there are no large lecture hall style classes at Hofstra, but rather small classes where faculty members get to know you, you certainly get to know them, and discussion and sharing of ideas and, and opinions is definitely encouraged. We have students who come from all 50 states, as well as a multitude of uh, different countries, and we'll get to our majors in a bit, but know that there are about 165 different majors uh, at the university. So like all of the schools in this block, uh, we all are located on the East Coast. Uh, we talk a little bit about seasons and seasonality out in this part of the country. And as my colleague Emily said, uh, we're all dying for winter to be over and to start moving into spring. Um, many of the schools in this block are also located in New York and Hofstra is no exception. We are located exactly 25 miles east of New York City in a very suburban residential setting. We're a 240 acre campus that also happens to be an arboretum as well as an outdoor sculpture garden. Students certainly utilize our campus as well as nearby New York City. And access in and out of New York City is easily done by train. The train ride takes approximately 40 minutes. So our students use New York City for fun, for adventure, for going to sporting events, for cultural opportunities, uh, as well certainly as internships. We're big on experiential hands-on learning at Hofstra. And as you can see, about 71% of our students do at least one internship during the time that they're with us. On average, um, Hofstra students do 2.3 internships during their four years. So earlier I mentioned we have 165 majors. This uh, slide is not meant to give you eye strain, but rather just to give you an idea of the depth and breadth of what we offer. Our majors are then divided into various schools or colleges that comprise Hofstra. So for example, the Zarb School of Business, we have a College of Engineering, there's a School of Communication, you get the drift. Um, students when making application to Hofstra certainly uh, indicate a major or majors that they may be interested in, but at Hofstra we choose not to admit students programmatically, which means if you are indeed admitted to Hofstra, you have the option of entering any of the 165 majors that we have to offer. And students don't need to declare a major until the end of their second year. Even with 165 majors, the most popular by far is I don't know yet or I'm not sure yet. And that's a perfectly acceptable major when you first arrive on campus. Certainly Hofstra is a very residentially based campus community. Um, approximately 82% of our students reside on campus and housing is guaranteed for all four years. Our students are actively engaged. They tend to describe themselves as involved, as doers. Uh, they like staying busy. There are about 220 different uh, campus organizations, clubs, activities, many things that you may have begun in high school that you wish to continue on in, as well as lots of brand new things for you to try and explore. Many of our students are involved in community service pursuits. Um, we also offer 21 Division I athletics. Our Hofstra sports teams are known as the Hofstra Pride and our master Scots are Kate and Willie Hofstra, who are two lions. And just a quick little bit about our admissions policies. Um, Hofstra utilizes both the common application as well as our own regular application. We've been a test optional institution since 2014, and we don't think that that's going to be changing anytime in the near future. Um, it has certainly been my pleasure to spend a little bit of time with you tonight. Definitely, if you would like to take a screenshot or take a photo, here's my contact information. I'm only too happy to help you out by answering any questions that may arise after this evening. So thanks so very much. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. Take good care. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions for any of our presenters during this session, just go ahead and use the Q&A button. Ask your question at any time. 
If it's for a specific school, just make sure that you name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Marist College. Oops, so sorry. Well, good evening and thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Corinne Schell, Director of West Coast Admission at Marist College. Uh, I've actually, I'm a Marist graduate, my husband, son, daughter, sister, niece, nephew, twin nieces. So needless to say, I'm a little passionate about Marist and all that it has to offer our students. Uh, like the other two schools, we're also located in, in the state of New York. Uh, I'm about an hour and a half north of New York City. We are in a suburban environment in a town called Poughkeepsie. Across town from us is also Vassar College. Uh, up the road from us is the Culinary Institute of America, uh, which is the culinary school. Bard College is about a half hour north. There's a community college in town. Uh, and then there's a state university about a half hour uh, west of us. However, if you expand the, uh, the scope, there is quite a few colleges and universities in our particular area. But I wanna talk a little bit about Marist. The picture that you're looking at here is a picture of our campus. Uh, I call it the Academic Country Club. It's an absolutely stunning campus with very strong uh, academics, as well as a wonderful opportunity and an environment for students uh, in any type of activities. Uh, we are one mile from the train station, so our students have that chance to get down to New York City to take advantage of those internship opportunities, which Marist is uh, very, very strong on. Whoop. This picture here is a picture of our student center. Uh, it has our Barnes and Nobles bookstore, our theater, our Harry Potter style dining hall with a sushi bar, uh, some of our freshman uh, accommodations for housing, What's nice is students do not have to leave this particular building to get to the dining hall, but unfortunately you do have to leave the building to get to class. Uh, as mentioned, our music department, our theater, our housing and residential life, college activities, uh, they are all located in this particular building. Some of our fox facts, our mascot is the Marist Red Fox, uh, and we're a little over 5,100 undergraduate students. So not too big, not too small, very difficult for students to get lost in a crowd. Our class sizes range anywhere from five, 10, 15, 20 students in a class. The max you will ever have is 35. No teaching assistant, no lecture halls. All of our classes are taught by faculty. So you can be guaranteed by the end of the second or third class, faculty know who you are by name. And I think that that's incredibly wonderful uh, that you're not in a lecture hall with 700, 750 other people. We do offer well over 40 different majors. Uh, however, one of the most popular majors for an incoming freshman is undecided. And you have up until the end of the second semester in your sophomore year to determine what it is that you would like to study. Uh, we also have a graduate program at Marist, uh, which is completely online. However, we do have several four or five year programs where students can get their bachelor's and their master's within five years. Our student body is represented by 47 different states, 64 countries. Student to teacher ratio is about 16 to one. And then we have approximately 96% of our freshmen that reside on campus. The other 4% live home with their families. A very big popular number for, especially for parents, 98% of our students upon graduation are either employed or in graduate school. Uh, and I think that that's music to a parent's ears. 83% of our students will graduate within a four year period of time compared to the national average for both public and private institutions is much, much lower. This is a listing of our different majors that we offer at Marist. Uh, we do have fashion design, fashion merchandising, which is incredibly popular. We also have computer science. 90% of those students are employed before they even enter their senior year. We have business administration, everything from uh, finance, where we actually have an investment center on campus. So our students are trading on Wall Street Monday through Friday. Uh, and then being that we are that close to New York, we do have a lot of our Marist alum that work in, in the New York area, in the Manhattan area. So they do a lot of mentoring programs that um, really do help students uh, not only uh, find uh, mentor, um, internship programs, but employment upon graduation. Uh, so this again is a, 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 just a, an assortment of the different majors that we offer. Our fashion program is fifth in the country, 25th in the world. So um, great program there. 
internships, as I stated before, 83% of our students will participate in, in at least one internship. Uh, however, again, almost uh, all of our students will do at least one, maybe two, and they traditionally tend to be about six credits for the internships. Um, we also have a great study abroad program. More than half of our students will study abroad at some point in their college career to well over 80 different destinations. We have semester program, we have two short-term programs, and then we also have two uh, freshman year programs where students can study abroad at our campus in Florence, Italy, or at, in Dublin, Ireland. We are a division one school for sports. We offer uh, 23 varsity, 12 women, 11 men, 16 club sports, everything from equestrian, ice hockey, men's and women's rugby, uh, as well as uh, cheerleading. Uh, we, can, we do have well over 80 different clubs and organizations on campus. Residential students, as I mentioned before, 96% incoming freshmen live in college housing. 90% of our upper class students that wish to live on campus do. Financial aid, merit-based, uh, special needs, we are special programs. And we also have a wonderful learning support program at Maris, uh, which is one of the best in the country. And then these are the different ways to apply to Marist. My time is up, so please feel free to reach out to me. Here's my contact information. Uh, and I look forward to hopefully connecting with you at some point. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, I will remind everyone, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our representatives at any time. And if it's for a specific representative, just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from the new school. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Avery Tamchin and I'm Assistant Director of Admission at the New School University and my pronouns are she, her. The New School was founded in 1919. So we just celebrated our centennial about two years ago and we're a private university right in the heart of New York City in the Greenwich Village neighborhood. We're comprised of five different colleges, and today I'm going to focus on the three that offer traditional four-year bachelor degree programs, and those are Parsons School of Design, Eugene Lang College of Liberal Arts, and the College of Performing Arts. I'll also touch briefly upon um, our Parsons Paris campus, um, while which is in Paris, France, um, while the other three are based in our primary campus in New York City. My colleagues touched upon this, the concept of a seminar-based education in some of these previous sessions. And Lang, um, our liberal arts college, is also a seminar-based program. And we offer courses of study in the humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. The open curriculum at Lang, rather than a prescribed academic core, gives students the freedom to explore what is relevant to them and all students will enter Lang undeclared and will not have to declare a major until the end of their second year. Next up, we have our College of Performing Arts, which is like a matryoshka doll um, of colleges as there are three schools within our College of Performing Arts. We have Manus School of Music, which is our classical music conservatory. We have the School of Drama and the School of Jazz and Contemporary Music. Our College of Performing Arts offers Bachelors of Fine Arts and Bachelors of Music programs in jazz, instrumental and vocal performance, interdisciplinary dramatic arts and classical music disciplines such as composition, orchestral conducting and instrumental and vocal performance. Parsons School of Design is probably our most well-known and the largest school within our university and students in this college will pursue studies in visual art, design, and design business. On the other end of the spectrum is Parsons Paris, which is our smallest program with under 300 students total. Students can spend all four years at our Paris campus or can apply for a study abroad term there. This program is English taught, but there are plenty of opportunities to learn French and explore the community outside of our building in the first arrondissement. Altogether, our community at the new school numbers close to 10,000 students, 8,000 of whom are undergraduates. 
We have representation from all 50 states and we have one of the highest um, percentages of international students in uh, United States colleges with almost 30% um, of our students being international students. The new school students, no matter their area of focus, benefit from being part of a larger comprehensive university that celebrates innovative and interdisciplinary study. You can see the full list of majors here broken up by college. Um, some things I wanted to point out in regards to application procedure for the new school is that you do apply directly to your college of interest. So students who are interested in pursuing a degree in art and design would apply directly to Parsons School of Design or Parsons Paris and would be required to submit a portfolio for admission consideration. The same goes for those students who are interested in the performing arts. They would apply directly to um, Mana School of Music, the School of Drama, or the School of Jazz and Contemporary Music and submit um, the required audition materials in order to be considered for admission. If you have interests that span schools or programs, there are a number of ways to explore across disciplines at the new school. We offer a unique five-year BA, BFA pathway um, that is designed for students who want a comprehensive education in both the liberal arts and either jazz or contemporary music or visual art and design. This program culminates in a Bachelor of Arts from Eugene Lane College of Liberal Arts and a Bachelor of Fine Arts from either Parsons School of Design or the School of Jazz and Contemporary Music in our College of Performing Arts. We also offer some unique five-year bachelor's master's pairings, primarily housed within Eugene Lane College of Liberal Arts and then within our graduate programs at the New School of Social Research and the Schools of Public Engagement. In addition to these unique bachelor dual degree programs, um, we also have more than 50 university minors across a variety of disciplines. These minors are available across colleges. So a student at Parsons could minor in a liberal arts discipline at Lang and vice versa. Some of our most popular minors include communication design, psychology, and creative entrepreneurship. While we are not currently hosting visitors on campus, you can take a virtual tour with us at the link on this slide and I'll be happy to put that in the chat um, after my presentation. On our tour, you can explore the incredible resources on campus, including our making center, which includes uh, 3D printers, large format looms, a motion capture studio, as well as residence halls and other classroom spaces. To learn more about our offerings and to connect with us further, we are hosting a series of virtual events throughout the spring, and I would encourage you to connect with us there. And please feel free to ask any questions using that Q&A box that Russ has pointed out a couple of times. Thanks so much for joining me today, as well as all of my colleagues, and I look forward to connecting with you. Thank you very much. And at the risk of sounding repetitive, which it's far too late for that, I will mention the Q&A box one more time. Uh, ask questions of any of our representatives. And if it's for a specific school, just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the Maine Maritime Academy. Thank you, Russ. Uh, hello, my name is Elizabeth Allaby. Uh, I work at Maine Maritime Academy as an admissions counselor. There we go, got it all. Um, and for those of you who haven't heard of any state maritime academies, you're in for a treat. Talk about a niche college. We specialize in STEM degrees focusing on, you guessed it, the ocean, um, be it ocean studies, uh, marine transportation, marine engineering, um, and we also look at international business and logistics. Um, so in essence, the trade aspect. So what I'm going to do is just walk you through our college. Uh, feel free to use that chat head and throw in my email in the chat. You can always contact me after this as well. Um, but we are a very small school. We're about a 35 acre campus located directly on the coast of Maine. So we're about midway up the coast of Maine. Canada's a couple hours north. Acadia National Park is about one hour up the coast from us. Um, but 
certainly the waterfront portion of our campus directly on uh, our campus sets us apart. Uh, we offer uh, 23 different degree programs, the majority of which are four-year bachelor's programs. Um, and generally our students are getting some sort of professional licensing degree with their bachelor's. Uh, this can span um, state of Maine specific engineering licenses all the way through uh, huge unlimited tonnage licenses from the Coast Guard that enable marine engineers and deck officers to work aboard any size vessel all over the world. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, because we're small, we're at about 950 undergraduates, so truly a small uh, public college. Um, we're able to offer a pretty small student to faculty ratio around 11 to 1. So if you enjoy getting to know your professors, getting to know their experiences in the industry, um, and tapping into their research, uh, this would be a great fit for you. Uh, other things I wanted to mention, certainly our waterfront. Um, we have over 60 training pleasure and research vessels that are at your disposal, all the way from our 500 foot training ship that our students train on over the summer, down to small um, keel and dinghy sailboats. So really you can explore and you should explore the beautiful coast of Maine with over a thousand islands. I'll mention more about student life in just a moment. Uh, so as I mentioned before, we have these four primary areas of study, engineering, transportation, uh, management, that business and logistics piece, as well as ocean studies. So there's definitely a thread of uh, the ocean through all of these different programs. Uh, we are at an extremely hands-on school. So anything that you encounter in a lecture style class, you will then go do in a lab. If you are in a license program, you're getting those Coast Guard licenses, you will be on the water in your first week at our institution, whether you're operating the vessel, um, you're learning how to tie knots, handle lines, navigate, different things like that. If you're in perhaps more of the power engineering side or the business side, um, you're still going to have opportunities and hands-on labs, be it the logistics lab where you bring a product to market, maybe our steam simulator, some miniature steam power plant, things of that nature. Uh, so we really believe in learning by doing. That way it's muscle memory by the time that you graduate and encounter the industry. Uh, one kind of neat aspect of Maine Maritime Academy would be our regiment of midshipmen. About two thirds of our student body are in this uniformed student body. Those students in the marine engineering and marine transportation programs that are getting those unlimited tonnage licenses from the Coast Guard. Um, this is where we kind of throw folks off. We look very much like a military school. The name Academy is part of our college name, uh, but we are not a military school. Our students are required to be in uniform as per the Coast Guard um, to prepare them for a life at sea. However, when our students graduate, they are not going into any branch of the military. Um, unless they want to. We do have a Naval ROTC unit. There's a way to commission into the Navy Reserves or to the Coast Guard directly. But typically, uh, our student body graduate and go on to be what are called commercial mariners, working aboard commercial vessels worldwide. Um, and as I mentioned, about two thirds of our student body are in this uh, uniform. And so for the other majors, it's voluntary. You certainly can join. There's a lot of benefit if you enjoy this type of structure and this different type of leadership style you might be interested. Um, we certainly keep you busy in your summers, whether you're cruising aboard our training ship, you see that in the bottom left, um, or you're getting a co-op or an internship out with a professional company, all of our students across the board uh, will get this industry experience and this will set you up for success by the time you graduate. Um, in fact, over 90% of our students are employed in their fields within 90 days of graduation. And a lot of this has to do with the caliber and quality of the academics of the hands-on piece. And excuse me, uh, what you do in terms of your summer opportunities. Here's a small selection of some of the companies our students go on to work for. So keep in mind, we're a very small school, about a thousand students, but our students truly go on to do some pretty big things out in the world. I did want to mention that we do have um, a variety of Division Three varsity sports. I believe we're up to nine men's teams, seven women's teams. So whether or not you're a player, it's really nice to know that there is this Mariner spirit aboard our campus. Listen to me, aboard our campus, on our campus, right? So whether um, you want to go cheer on the Mariners or you want to become one, there could be an opportunity for you there as well.
I was just going to show this real quick as my last slide. Um, if you're wondering why you would go to such a small school, here are some compelling reasons. Uh, so we are number four top public college, number five regional college in the north. So keep that in mind as you're considering your future options. Thank you very much for your time. If you're interested in a unique opportunity on the coast of Maine, consider Maine Maritime. Thank you very much. And there's still time to ask questions. Use the Q&A button if you have questions for any of our uh, representatives. And if it's for a specific one, just make sure to put the name of the school in the question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Marymount Manhattan College. Thank you so much, Russ. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexis McPadden. I am an admission counselor here at Marymount Manhattan College. I am also an alum. I graduated in 2018, and I was a double major in business and communications while studying at Marymount. Um, if you'd like to get more information uh, after this presentation today, please feel free to scan that QR code and we can continue the conversation later on. Um, it'll be on the last slide as well. So just some quick facts about Marymount Manhattan College. We were founded in 1936 as an all-girls Catholic school. Um, we are no longer either of those things. We are a co-ed uh, college with no religious affiliation. We are located on the Upper East Side of New York City on 71st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue, and we are made up of nearly 1900 students. So we are in New York City um, and a very small campus in a huge city. Um, that being said, average class size is pretty small, 15 students. So in the virtual world, all your classmates are on one screen um, on Zoom. Uh, our average student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. So professors do know your name um, at Marymount and many small colleges, you're, you're a name, not a number. Um, and students can choose from 32 majors and 45 minors uh, to study while at Marymount. Some in incoming class statistics, first year average GPA weighted is a 3.6, average SAT is an 1100, and average ACT is 20, uh, 24. Um, we are test optional this year as uh, well as fall 2022 um, for incoming students, so no need to apply with test scores if you don't want to, but just to give you a, a ballpark of where our students uh, land with test scores. Um, on the right is a map to show you where we are located in the city. So this top bubble um, is our main campus on 71st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. We have our first year residence hall, which is on 55th Street uh, between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. It's a 16 block walk up to campus, which as a West Coast student might sound like a lot, but once you get your city legs, it's a pretty fast walk up to campus. Um, and that is a 32 story high rise building Nicest building I'll ever live in Manhattan, uh, lived on the 30th floor with a downtown view, it was hard to beat. Um, and then we have our upperclassmen residence hall, which is down in the East Village, um, and that is called Cooper Square. It's quite literally across the street from Cooper Union, um, and you're within walking distance to wa Washington Square Park um, and many other college neighborhoods down um, on the lower side of Manhattan. Um, so as I mentioned, we have 32 majors and 45 minors to choose from. So if a major has an asterisk next to it, that indicates that it can also be a minor. Um, here at Marymount, we encourage and allow for double majoring um, across different types of majors. So if you're coming in as an acting BFA student and you want to double major in psychology, you can do that within our four year time period. Um, if you're interested in dance and biology, one of my friends was a dance and bio major. She choreographed her final dance depicting cell division. So Marymount really um, cares about interconnectivity between our majors um, and the interdisciplinary study of many different areas. Um, we offer Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees, Bachelor of Science degrees, and Bachelor of Art degrees. Um, and while double majoring isn't required, many of our students do pursue double majors. To give you a breakdown of your degree at Marymount, you're going to have uh, your major credits, your general education curriculum credits, and then anything remaining will be an elective course. And at Marymount, we have a thing called double dipping. So one class can count towards three, uh, two or three requirements. Um, so if you are interested in double majoring, that's kind of how that is um, able to happen at Marymount. Your general education courses will be broken down into three different areas as well. You have your foundation courses, your disciplinary study courses, and then your advanced interdisciplinary perspective courses. 
At Marymount, we believe that it's important to be a full, well-rounded student. So even if you're getting a BFA degree um, that is a conservatory-like program, you're also going to be taking classes in um, the sciences and the um, communication studies as well. Our career services office is one of our well-known offices at Marymount. Um, you are coming to New York City to have the experience of going to school in, in such a city. Um, so our career services office will help with everything from cover letter, resume building to get your, you started, and then interview preparation, job search tips, um, introducing you to networking and using Marymount as a network, um, and also general career counseling. 55% um, of Marymount students complete one inter at least one internship for credit while studying at Marymount. Um, many of our students will do unpaid internships or paid internships for no credit. Um, so that's why uh, that number is right around 55%. And we have a really awesome program called City Edge, which is a stipend for students. Um, if you're interning at a non-government organization or a nonprofit, um, you can apply for the City Edge stipend, which is $1,000 given to you by Marymount um, to help kind of supplement doing an unpaid internship in New York City. The background of this image is where some of our students have interned in the past year. Um, so we have students at SNL, Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Sony Music, uh, HBO, um, Mount Sinai, Christie's, all over the board. Um, going to college in New York City. New York City is quite literally your campus. Um, so if you have a company here that you wanna work for, um, Marymount can help you get there. Study abroad opportunities. Because we are a small school, we don't have any Marymount campuses elsewhere, but we do still allow for stud students to do independent study abroad. Um, we're part of two consortium groups uh, where students can go to those colleges and study uh, at those colleges. And then we also have travel study courses, which are a unique setup where you're taking a class at Marymount for the semester, and then you're going to the place you've been studying. So those will typically fulfill one of your general education requirements. We have trips um, with our fashion, mar uh, fashion marketing program to London and um, Paris each year. And then we also have programs within our theater department, our English and World Lit department as well, um, as well as our biology department for those travel study courses. So if you don't wanna to commit to a full semester for study abroad, you don't have to, and you can um, take a shorter term. We have over 50 registered student organizations on campus. Um, one of my favorite events is called Apple Fest, and it's a essentially a block party. We closed down 71st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. All of our clubs have tables lined up um, and it's a welcoming back ceremony for our returning students and a welcome to campus uh, program for our first year students. Um, great way to get involved, see what's out there. There's also lots of free stuff. Uh, two years ago, they had tarot card readings, henna artists. Um, so it's a great way to kind of get involved in the Marymount campus. We have three application plans, uh, early decision, early action, and regular decision. If anyone is here that's a senior that's still looking to apply to colleges, um, we are still accepting those. We're re uh, reading them on a rolling basis currently, but if you're a junior looking to apply next year, um, early decision is binding, early action is non-binding. Um, most of our students will apply early action, um, especially if you're interested in one of our BFA programs, you would apply early action rather than early decision. Application requirements, we are on the Common App. We also have our own MMC application. We need an essay, one letter of recommendation, your high school transcript, um, optional test scores, and then the application fee. And we have scholarship opportunities, merit-based, competitive, and external. Marymount is a stackable school. So what that means is any external scholarships that you receive, you can stack those right on top of your financial aid packages. Um, there are some schools that will take away institutional aid. If you're bringing in external money, Marymount won't do that. We believe that you're being awarded this money for a reason. And so we won't penalize you for bringing in that external money. Um, but both our merit-based and competitive scholarships are renewable all four years. And then lastly, we welcome you to stay connected. We are open for campus tours right now for accepted students. So if you are an accepted student joining us tonight, um, please feel free to check out uh, our website for those visits. And then in the summer, we will be opening back up for prospective students as well. Um, feel free to follow us on social media, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. And we are excited to be having you here tonight. Thank you for joining me. Um, and yeah, that's the end for me.
want to thank you all for uh, joining us tonight and want to thank each of our representatives for presenting during this session. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this session. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash WACAC, W-A-C-A-C. Once again, thank you to each of our representatives for presenting tonight. And I hope everyone has a good rest of their Wednesday. Thank you.